Hello guys, what is up? It is Spooky Noodles, aka Nick, Nicholas Gray, if you will, the author of fantastic books such as Gray Matter and Field of Fiends. And I did also uh, do Thing of the Ward, Thing in the Ward. Oh, I got a piece of hair in my mouth. Um, yeah, um, dog hair, by the way. Um, not people hair. Uh, hope not. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, I, I am a public, I am an, uh, author first, a YouTuber second, and technically I'm a publisher, but I don't really want to put too much focus in that. Yeah, I own a business name and everything like that, yada, 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 but until my publishing company has at least one book out, I'm not going to call myself a publisher until I release that one book, um, Good news about that, though. I did get the contracts finished, and I will send them out soon. But anyways, that's besides the point. Um, today, we have a book haul-ish thing. Um, basically, um, I went to a bookstore called Brown's Family Bookstore down in St. Clair Shores, Michigan. I went to go see my father. We spent like three hours eating at Buffalo Wild, <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings um, and ate shitty wings. Well, what I considered shitty wings, uh, they tasted horrible and there was barely any meat on the bones. But anyways, I digress. I'm not saying Buffalo Wild Wings is bad. I'm not a supporter, but I'm also not a hater. So they had really good chips um, and I had chips and salsa and the salsa and chips were really good. So yeah, but anyways, besides the point, um, after I did the Buffalo Wild Wings with my dad, I went ahead and went to the Browns Family Bookstore. They were about to close down and by close down, I mean shut down for the day. Um... They lock the door at 4.30 and, and close at 5. So you have to get into the store before 4.30. And then, yeah. So I raced to the store. We got there around like 4.16, 4.17, maybe 4.20. I don't even know. 4.20, hey. Um, and uh, yeah, I got in and I looked for some books and I found four. So yeah, I'm really excited to show you guys what I found. And yeah, so first book I got is... You, you guys might know this book. Um, I've never read it, and I've never owned a paperback version. I've owned like three hardbacks though, but uh, this is not. This is like, um, it says first printing in October 1990, and this book came out in. It looks like 1990. So this is a first printing. It looks like of this book, so that's pretty cool. Um. I don't really have a first print of anything by Stephen King, but, uh, yeah, they don't, I don't think paperbacks are really collectible, but, um, I still think it's pretty cool, you know, um, and that's The Dark Half by Stephen King, um, I don't really know what this book is about, I'll read the back for you guys, but, you know, I, you probably already know what it's about, so, yeah, so here we go, Thad Beaumont would like to say his, he is innocent, he'd like to say he has nothing to do with the series of monstrous murders that kept that keep coming closer to his home. He'd like to say he has nothing to do with the twisted imagination that produced his best-selling novels. He'd like to say he has nothing to do with the voice on the phone uttering its obscene threats and demanding total surrender. But how can Thad disown the ultimate embodiment of evil that goes by the name he gave it and signs its crimes with Thad's bloody fingerprints? So, yeah, this sounds like the dark half sounds like there's two dudes who are like one's committing crimes and one guy is just a writer. I don't know, really know anything about this book um, at all. Like, I, I've never seen the movie. I've never heard anyone talk about this book. So when I go into it, I'm probably going to be going into it blind. Um, this is a big book. I didn't. I was surprised by how chunky this book is. This book comes in at... 484 pages and that's a lot of fours um 484 and four divided by or two times four is eight so you got two fours there whatever i'm um, sorry I'm, I'm stupid anyways um i never read this book before it's a number one bestseller and how's how does it know it's a number one bestseller if it's a first print oh no no oh they're saying stephen king is the bestseller and then the name of the book. Okay, sorry. I was like, how do you already know? If it's the first printing, how does it already know it's a bestseller? But uh, never mind. I understand now. Um, so yeah, there's The Dark Half by Stephen King. I don't really like this cover. They had a cooler cover at the um, store. It was like black and purple and it had a dude's face on it. And it said, now a mo major motion picture. But um, I didn't like that. I, I liked that cover a lot. But I figured 
if these books are going to be worth anything in the future, then this is probably the one to go with. And I'm not saying this crappy, you know, look at that spine. So many wrinkles in it. It's old. But, um... I don't really know why I went with this one. I guess because it's a first print. I, I don't really know why I went with this one. Um, I feel like it's the first print, so it's probably the most clean edition, maybe. I don't know. I really don't know why I picked this one over the other one. The other one had a cool, co cooler cover. So um, the next one we have has this brutal sticker on it, which I just really want to peel off. And I'm going to attempt to peel it off now, but it's not working. Um, hang in there with me for a second. I hate stickers so freaking much. Why do they put them on books? This one says Kmart, and if you know anything about Michigan, Kmart used to be a thing. Uh, I don't think Kmart is a thing anymore. Maybe in Ohio, because Ohio's behind. But, uh, um, yeah, we don't have Kmarts here in Michigan anymore. All right, I kind of got the sticker off. And there's a sticker underneath the sticker. I didn't even notice that. <gasps> Anyways. Um, I already own this book in a different version, and I think the other version is actually bigger. Um, I don't know if this is a first print, a second print, whatever print, you know. Um, it doesn't even have the print in here. Um, this looks like it's, it's a first print, um, and it looks like it's the, um, edited down version of this book. Um, because the other version is, this version is, uh, if I can flip to the back page, um... This version is, if I can, oh, I have such dry fingers, y'all. Oh, man, this sucks, having dry fingers. All right, this book comes in at 238 pages, but I think I have the unedited version up in my room that is, like, over 300 pages, so I don't know what's up with that. But this is The Tulpa by J.N. Williamson. Now, I don't I haven't read any Jan Williamson books. Um, a lot of people say he's overrated. Um, just from what I've seen on YouTube, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, he's overrated. I've seen reviews and say that he's overrated. Honestly, I don't care. Um, one of these days, I'm going to read a Jan Williamson book. And I think I'm going to start with the Tulpa and probably this copy, too. Um, even though the other one's like the unedited version or something like that. Um... This one, I like to read what they were like in the beginning, like from the get-go, you know. And this book doesn't come out, I have a lot of pages in it. it. What did I say, 248? Is that what I said? I don't remember what I said. 238. So I'm looking forward to reading this. He has another book he wrote under an alias. I almost said aliens. Um, He wrote under an alias Uh, this book called... Um... Uh, oh, oh, it's in the tip of my tongue. Um, extraterrestrial. And, um, it has to do with aliens. And I am, f when it comes, like, not a lot of things scare me, to be honest with you. Um, but when I was a kid, I had an irrational fear that I was being abducted by aliens every single night. Or, not every single night, but, like, a few weeks, I would, I thought I was getting kidnapped by aliens. I thought they were abducting me. Um, I remember bright blue lights before I'd go to bed or before I'd fall asleep or something or I'd wake up to blue lights. And then I remember missing time, you know. But, of course, I'm not saying I'm being abducted. I don't really believe in that anymore. I don't believe aliens are coming in and abducting us. Uh, I have more of a speculative mind, speculative, speculative, I can't talk today, guys, I can't talk, a more speculative mind, um, like, a, I'm a skeptic all the way, um, I don't believe in a lot of things, I don't believe in ghosts, I don't believe in Sasquatches, I don't believe in the Loch Ness Monster, I don't believe in religion, like I said before, I, I just, I don't believe in much, so, most of horror books, like most horror books, don't really scare me. Psychological books, they tend to be okay um, when they're not talking too much. Like, I, I don't know. I seek out gore. I see, And I, I look for extreme horror because that stuff actually moves me. Whereas the normal horror doesn't really move me as much as it used to. Except for coming-of-age horror. Uh, I will read coming-of-age horror because I... It's not that I get scared of coming-of-age horror. It's that... Um, it's that I worry about the characters, you know, it becomes, it's not a fear, 
but I, I, I fall in love with characters and then I don't want to see them die and then I watch them die, you know? So when it comes to coming of age horror, it's not about the horror itself, to be honest with you. It's about the story. And um, other than that, though, when I look for horror, I look for scary things and scary things are more extreme. And this is the one, um, this like I, I, I say all that, but this is the one, um, the one, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, this is just the one like circumstance that uh, it's not extreme horror or coming of age horror. And that is anything to do with aliens. I am terrified of aliens. Um, not saying they're coming and abducting us. I'm not saying they're visiting our planet, although if a more if a more uh, sophisticated uh, group of aliens or ter extraterrestrials were to visit us, we probably would never know um, because their technology would be so superior to ours and they wouldn't want to be caught. So I doubt, I don't know. It's such a hard one. Little Kid Nick is like, I'm just terrified of aliens. So reading about aliens... The, like aliens could exist like they, they probably do exist because we found multiple worlds that could sustain life in other galaxies and uh, uh universes and stuff blah 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 and um yeah so when it comes to aliens yeah i'm a little scared of them um so when it comes when i find an alien themed book which is actually kind of f hard to find um i have to read it so when it comes to Jan Williamson, even though the Topa it sounds like his best book, I'm probably going to read that extraterrestrial book um, because I'm more terrified of aliens than anything else. So, wow, we're already 12 minutes into this video and I've only talked about like the Topa. So I'm going to move on to the next book. Hopefully you like that little spiel of about uh, Jan Williamson and aliens. Um, all right, so these next two books... I don't know how rare they are, and I didn't buy them because they're rare. I bought them because they sounded like good stories, but I think they might be rare books, um, especially in the condition they are in. I'm not saying they're in the best condition. In fact, for all I know, they're written inside. There's like writing inside or something I don't know about, but it doesn't look like it is. So I'm going to show you the first book, which I'm very, very excited about, um, and then I'll show you the second one. I own, I think, all of this guy's paperbacks. Um, so, you know, and I think I'm going to start off with the guy that I own all his paperbacks. So um, I'm going to flip the book over. So I don't know if I already own this book or not. In fact, this book does not scream horror at all. This book screams like romantic thriller. But, um, yeah, so the book I got is Thomas Tryon's Harvest Home. Now, I doubt this is a collector's edition or a, a rare book or anything like that. I've just never seen this in paperback. Um, I hear that... I, I think it's Harvest Home, right? Harvest Home, I think, is the one that everyone talks about when they talk about Thomas Tryon. I think they're talking about Harvest Home, I think. And I think it's more of like a Halloween-type tale. I'm not really sure. But I'm going to read the back for you guys. Um, I didn't read what the topo was about. I think I'll go back and read that. But uh, this is what uh, Harvest Home is about. So here we go. Also, it's a, it was a TV show. So that's pretty cool. So yeah. Um, it was almost as if time had not touched the village of Cornwall. Combe. The quiet, peaceful place was straight out of bygone era. With well-cared for colonial houses, a white steepled church fronting the, bo the broad common, Ned and Beth Constantine chanced upon the hamlet of and immediately fell in love with it. This was exactly the haven they dreamed of, or so they thought. For Ned and his family, Cornwall Combe has to become a place of ultimate horror. So that is Harvest Home. Um, like I said, I think it's a rare book. Maybe not this copy, but I've never seen it in paperback, so that's why I think it's pretty cool. Um, this has got to be a second copy here. Um, let me check. Yeah, definitely a second copy. Um, this one was printed in 1977, it looks like. And the book came out in 1973. Yeah, it looks like it originally came out in hardcover. So this might be 
the second printing paperback. I'm not really sure. I don't know how all that works. But, um, yeah, this book looks nice, um, in nice condition. Um, hardly has any break. Well, it has a, a few, it is broken on the spine, but, um, it just looks really nice. And I've never seen this book in paperback. So I went ahead and got it. And I think I own all four. I know he owns more books, but I think they're less horrifying. So I own all of his like horror related books. So yeah. And then back to the Tulpa. Let's read what the Tulpa is about, shall we? So here's the Tulpa. It rose from within with the special hunger, with a special hunger. Charlie Cavanaugh felt all of his 73 years, felt all of his 73 years. He was, excuse me, he was burdened by age and a drifting mind. He was worried about his spells, his dreams, his visions, or, or visions. No one would listen. No one except his son-in-law, who saw things coming, building, promising, unheard of horror. Then it comes, then it came. It rose from within, slowly at first, shuffling through shadows, learning of violence, developing a special hunger. Then it struck, and again, it grew, it grew, sorry, it grew, not quite quenching its thirst on blood and fear. And the only thing, and only one thing could hope to destroy the terrorizing appetite of the tulpa. So, and you got this guy and his legs are, instead of having legs, he has a brain for legs. That's pretty cool. And yeah, so now I got to sneeze. So I'm going to turn off the video real quick. All right, I sneezed. So let's move on to the last book I own. I, I not own. Um, sorry. The last book I just bought. And again, I'm not really buying books too often. And I'm not really reading or buying retro reads right now. Um, like these, these are, it's rare for me to look for like um, 80s and 90s and 70s horror books but um i gotta switch arms um but i decided to go ahead and go to the bookstore since i was already in st Clair shores and um they have that brown's family bookstore shout out to brand's Fa family bookstore for being open um but yeah um this is the last book this is avon horror i don't know if this is a first printing or not but i do know that this is a hard to find book i'm not i don't know if it's rare per se let me look and see if this is a first paperback or not. Um, let's see here. Copyright 1989. And this book came out in... Oh, this is a first printing. Okay. So this is a first printing, y'all. Um, and that is Demon Thorpe. Demon Thorpe? Yeah, Demon Thorpe by Chet Williamson. Um, I've heard fantastic stuff about Chet Williamson. I've only listened to him narrate books before, so that's pretty cool. But, um, I decided to go get this book. I have no idea what it's about. Um, I've had this as a, um, Kindle buy for a while. I wanted to buy this on Kindle and I could not find this paperback anywhere until now. And as you can see, it has a little breaks in the spine, but actually it looks pretty good. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy about this. It says Chet Williamson, author of Ash Wednesday. And I don't know anything about Ash Wednesday, but when people talk about Chet Williamson, I hear them talk about this book a lot. So here we go. We're going to read the back of the book for you, the synopsis. And, uh, yeah, so here we go. Um, Demon Thorpe, Demon Thorpe, or, oh my God, I'm saying the name wrong. Oh my God. How come you guys didn't tell me? It's Dream Thor Thorpe, Dream Thorpe. I thought that said Demon Thorpe. Didn't that say Demon Thorpe? Wow. Mandela Effect? No, I'm just kidding. Um, Dream Thorpe. Dream Thorpe. Dream Thorpe. Okay, I'll remember that. Dream Thorpe. Welcome to Dream Thorpe. A sleepy little Pennsylvania resort town where city folks can get away from it all. A town where a woman who saw her best friend mutilated by a crazed sex killer can hide and forget until haunted relics of another age awaken an ancient evil and unleash a human horror that has no place outside of hell so yeah this sounds like an interesting book um now that i've read the description i have no idea what it's really about to be honest i don't know what kind of creature this monster is i don't know the characters at all um looking forward to reading it though um because i hear great things about chet williamson um, oh, I thought I was reading a Chet Williamson book the other day, but then when I checked, uh, when I checked, 
Um, oh, they don't even have chapters. They have like what looks like uh, letters. That's weird. Do they have a chapters or is it just, I don't think this thing has chapters. All right. Well, that's cool. Um, so anyways, um, yeah, that's Dream Throp. Dream, Dream Throp. Thorp. Dream Thorpe. That is hard to say. Dream Thorpe by Ch Chet Williamson. Like I was saying, I thought I was listening to a Chet Williamson book. And um, I was like, I thought Chet Williamson would be better, is what I kept telling myself. And I, I don't mean to be rude to anybody, you know. I'm not saying this author is bad, because actually they read, I read another book by this author, and it was amazing. It was called The Howling by Gary, Gary Brandner. And, um, Brandner. And, uh... This book is also by Gary Brandner. It's called um, The Brain Eaters, I think it's called. And I got like two and a half hours left in the audiobook. And it's going well. I'm leaning towards three stars at the moment. Um, it's it's definitely... Um, it's definitely um, going to have a hard time surviving the, t the eras that we're going to go through. Um... Especially with cancel culture going on and stuff. I have a feeling that this these type of books are going to get lost. You know? I'm not saying it's a bad book at all. Um, I, I like it, but it's very... Um, it mentions a certain demographic and in a negative manner a lot. And by a lot, I mean not like too often, but it, it happens in the book. And... Um, some characters, you get it, you know. Other characters, you're like, well, this guy is supposed to be our main character. Why are, Why is he a dick, you know? But anyways, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying the book so far. Uh, oh, the book is called The, the Brain Eaters, I think is what it's called. Um, I saw this on, I saw the book being rated on, um, reviewed on Cameron Chaney's channel. And he recommended getting the audiobook, and that's what I got. I got the audiobook, and, um... Yeah, it's 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 pretty good so far. Um I don't know who narrated it. Maybe that's why I thought um it was Chet Williamson because maybe Chet Will no, Chet Williamson doesn't narrate it. Um Chet Williamson did narrate another book I read, but I don't remember what it was. Um Jeez, I forget. Anyways, those are the books I got. Um out of the four books that I got, which one am I the most excited about? I got to go with Dream Thorpe. Dreamthorpe for sure sounds like the the best book in this mix. Um, I think I have another Chet Williamson book in my uh in my collection upstairs. Um, so I'll put this one right next to it. Um, I don't know if I have another Chet Williamson book or not. I'm pretty sure I do though, and I'll put this one right next to it. I hope I don't already own this book. Um, but I from what I know, this is kind of a hard book to find. Not saying it's rare. It might be rare. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, Dream Thorpe. And that is it, guys. That is my book mail. I'm sorry it's so long. Um, I didn't expect it to be this long. And uh, uh, excuse me. Ah, man, I've been having really bad uh, uh, indigestion or something. Like it's like my chest and throat are like hot, you know, every time I like burp. So it hurts a lot. But um. I'm sure that's normal when you eat as bad as I do. Um, although I'm eating better. Um, not to freak you guys out or anything, but um, I am eating better. Um, I think I'm losing weight. I don't. I wouldn't know because I don't own a scale. But I've been working for the past three days on the um, uh, yard work. Um, my sister says, you didn't really work. You worked like a few hours and then you gave up. And it's like, yeah, well, my body can't go that long. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I got, I don't got a high motor, especially in the, with the body I have currently. Um, and I also have been riding my bike a lot and walking the dogs. So, and I'm trying, I'm trying to eat less and less when I'm not hungry. So I did go a little bit off the diet plan and I did eat, eat like a carton of ice cream the other day. But other than that, <laughs> I've been eating pretty well. Um, so I feel like I'm losing weight, but I can't really tell. It's hard to tell um, when you don't have a scale. But um, I am a size 40 in jeans, just to give you an idea of how big I am. I'm a size 40 in jeans. I'm a double XL and possibly moving up to a triple XL. And it's not that... 
the shirts don't fit me uh fit me it's just i'm starting to get my I'm, my belly's starting to get bigger and well actually it seems like it's getting smaller but um i i for a while there i was afraid that i had had to get triple xl shirts because my belly was extending more and more and i already have problems with my shoulders and shirts you know even if the line is like up to my like you know like the top of my um arm um for the where the line cuts you know uh it just it gets like i have these massive arms you know and shirts get squeezed the shirt shirt sleeves squeeze my arms so it's very uncomfortable and that's why i've been thinking about going up a size in shirts but um honestly if i keep losing weight like i am i, I feel like i'm losing weight i may have to uh just you know stick stick with double xl and i will probably always be a double xl um even when i shrink down to an xl like i used to be um i just feel more comfortable in double xls i just do so yeah i don't know why i went on a tangent about that but that's that's how big i am if you want an idea i'm not like fat or anything you know i'm 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 like average size i guess uh, maybe i'm fat maybe i am but um definitely overweight excuse me um definitely overweight and i need to watch it but other than that you know life's been good um life has been good oh, i had a rough patch for a while there but things are getting better um i had a talk with somebody recently um i made a post on facebook saying that i was having self-doubts about my writing and a publisher reached out to me uh, a guy who owns a publishing company, I should say, reached out to me and said that if I send him his work, he'll look over it and tell me what I need to improve on. Or he might even publish it if it's good enough. Well, maybe. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But um, he said he'll look it over and see what he thinks. And now I got to go and produce a book that's good enough, you know. So, so now I got to go write some a bit, you know. I got to write some. And, uh, yeah, so, um, I'm working on a few things. I got three novellas I'm working on. I got a novel I'm working on. Uh, I got my last short story for my short story collection I'm working on. So, yeah, things are in the works. Um, so, yeah. Um, sorry for all the ums, by the way. I know this video is, like, saturated with them, but, um, there I go again. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. <sighs> But yeah, that's my day is going well today. I'm about to eat some chocolate or something. I don't know. And I'm just going to read a book. Maybe even write a little bit. My goal is to write a little bit. But uh, reading is wouldn't be bad either. I would like to read something. And oh, I got to do laundry. Oh, no. I forgot to do laundry. Okay. Well, I think I know what I'm doing now. <laughs> um, Lula's being a good girl. James is being a good boy. You know how it is. Um, it's been it's been a good few days. Um, I saw my dad today, and that was nice. Um, and yeah, so I don't really have much to talk about anymore. Um, I'm sorry if I went on a little bit of a tangent about how I'm doing. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the four books that I got. Um, like I said, Dream Thro Dreamthorpe is the best book I think I own. The, or not own? No, no, I own a lot of good books, but um out of this little four book haul i think that's the best book i got then i would say it's a tie between uh the tulpa and um the harvest home one and then it would be the dark half not because the dark half's like bad or anything it's just i see the book everywhere and i just always forget to buy it you know i i don't own it so at least i don't think i own it so yeah anyways i'm gonna say peace out now um Sorry for this long ass video. I think it's going to be like, I don't know. Um, it's going to be about like 29 minutes long or something like that. I don't know. Let's just round it up to 30 minutes or something like that. I don't know. But um, I'm going to say goodbye now. I hope you guys are having a great day. I really do. Um, I know things are hard and rough and sometimes life can get you down, but... 
you just got to stick in there, you know, because everything turns around eventually. Even if it takes a long ass time, eventually things will start looking up again because they can't always be down in such a bottomless pit, you know. You can't always be in that pit. You got to climb a little bit sometimes. Eventually, hopefully, you will get out of that pit. So, yeah. Sorry, I don't know why I'm going on all emotional. But, uh, yeah, I just want to say, you know, like I've been having a hard time lately and... A lot of self-doubt and now i'm doing better so just know it does get better it's hard but it gets better and damn i need to shave all right i hope you guys have a great day i hope you have a spooky night and i'll catch you in the next video peace out